Are you looking for an alternative to the Fox 38 or the RockShox Zeb? Well, the new DVO Onyx D1 38mm chassis could be for you. Stay tuned as we dive into the performance attributes and what we liked about this fork over the last six months of abuse. So I outfitted the Onyx D1 SL to my Ari LaSalle Peak. Uh, you might have seen this bike bouncing around. We made two of these bikes identical or as close as you can get with custom paint. Uh, one is my personal bike and the other one is a giveaway bike that we actually just picked the giveaway winner for, so congrats. Um, and uh, essentially I was really excited to try out the new fork. And that was one of the reasons uh, that I wanted to try it out on this bike, because I knew I would be riding it a whole bunch. We've done a Fox, versus, uh, Fox 38 versus RockShox Zeb review in the past. Um, and I think no matter who you talk to, there's gonna be people who like different attributes of each fork. And I'm sort of skipping ahead here, but what's really awesome about this fork is that it sits right in the middle and it blends my favorite parts about the 38 with my favorite parts about the Zeb. So back to real time, let's get into just what makes this fork so different and what it is. So after we'd already put about four months of riding on this fork, we were able to spend some time talking with Bryson Martin Jr of DVO. Um, we didn't wanna to talk to them before because we wanted the ride to dictate uh, our impressions and feelings of the bike, or I should say of the fork, sorry. Um, and what we found out once we started talking to Bryson is that some of the things that we were really enjoying and picking on, uh, or picking up on in that fork's performance were goals and things that they were specifically trying to tune into the performance of this fork. So uh, first up, let's get into one of the most unique aspects of the fork, which is the arch. So Bryson told us that they started from scratch when it was time to design this 38 mil chassis fork, and it is all part of their one piece chassis design. And what they mean by that is that they view this whole fork from steer tube to axle as a one piece chassis. So they didn't want to just overbuild the crown or just overbuild the lowers and have the other parts not match up, right? So that would mean, you know, the lowers maybe were really flexy and, and would squirm around, but the crown was overly stiff or vice versa, right? Really stiff lowers with a flimsy crown. That's not gonna lead to a good steering experience or traction and composure experience. So this one piece chassis design was really the basis for them starting from scratch on this fork. Now, if you look at this arch, it is pretty unique compared to a lot of the other arches out on the market. And Bryson told us that they wanted to make something that was kind of the backbone of the fork. It has a really unique flex profile and they were ex able to experiment with different shapes angles, uh, the type or the amount of material and where it was applied. Uh, if you look at the backside of that arch, you can see there was a lot of time, thought, energy and testing that went into getting the right flex profile and characteristics, right? It's really easy for someone to make something really stiff. The downside to that is deflection, harshness, uh, lack of control. And that was a big goal for this fork was to make something that had great steering precision but didn't beat you up, didn't run you offline, wear you out, or have you washing that front end out. So uh, yeah, that arch is definitely a really cool feature. And one of the other neat things is they talk about the oversized thicker legs. They use more material down here which does equal more weight, right? Um, but it does aid in the damping and chatter reduction department. So um, as someone who suffers a lot from hand fatigue, uh, finger cramping, that sort of thing, I really appreciated the enhanced damping of this fork and kind of just the way it smoothed the chatter out. So moving away from the exterior and getting into a little bit more of the internal look at this fork, uh, we opted for the SL air spring, and that's kind of a newer option from DVO. Um, they have their OTT off the top technology, which is a coil negative spring fork. Uh, and that is something that's been around for quite a while in other chassis sizes. And 
It does offer some performance attributes that I think a lot of riders will find desirable, but to be honest, I actually preferred the SL. Um, it's a self-equalizing air on air, uh, air spring, not quite as adjustable as the off the top because you can't just dial in the spring for that off the top sensitivity. It's, you know, air pressure, but it's a lot more simple. And to be honest, I just, I, I liked the way it felt a little bit better because the small bump sensitivity is less, but it's very minimal. And I think that the performance of the rest of the way through the travel is better on this fork. And I know I'm not totally comparing apples to apples because the OTT forks I've ridden weren't in the 38 mil chassis um, and with the new updated D1 damper. So I, I could be totally wrong there and the new D1 damper in a 38 with the OTT here could be just as awesome, but I'm not bummed that I had the SL. It's, uh, I think it's like hundred grams lighter. I could be wrong there. I, I, that number has eluded me, but it is a, a, a decent weight dropping. And to me, the fork performs just fine in the SL configuration and I'm happy with it. Uh, what I will say from a performance and riding standpoint is I absolutely noticed that there wasn't that um, high, that high speed spike or stiffness when you get like that unexpected hit, right? A prime example is if you're riding in really dusty trails that you don't know well, and you might just kind of be sitting there in like that cautious ride position and boom, you hit a rock or a root at speed that was masked by the guy in front of you's dust on you know previous generation dvo forks and other you know brand suspension products sometimes you can get that like kind of a lock sensation and it feels really harsh gives a lot of feedback through the bar but it can also disrupt your body positioning and your weight and and that harshness will send you forward and not result in good things usually right it unweights the back end it puts you in a weird position where you're on your hands too much um, and I definitely noticed there was a lot of times where I would hit stuff I didn't see, whether it was like, you know, on off shadows or in really dense dust down in Costa Rica where it was really dry out this spring. Um, I was really surprised at how well this thing just got up out of the way and allowed me to charge forward in a, in a consistent body position. I wasn't feeling that shock or that input. Um, similarly, leaning the bike over, I really felt like I could trust the front end a bit. Uh, Obviously these super grippy Schwalbe tacky chans uh, were only helping the cause there, but um, I do feel like that fork just had a pretty nice and predictable feel. It didn't want to slowly squish and compress through the corner. It didn't also want to like just rebound and shoot me out. It wasn't noodly. It wasn't so stiff to where like it was just causing me to like micro drift and slide out of a corner because I wasn't like fast or strong enough to really just stay committed. I just thought it was a great blend of, of performance. Hunter, heavy hard braking, landing big compressions and drops, over chatter, cornering. I just, I, I'm really impressed by, with the fork overall. So final thoughts, uh, 2,450 grams roughly. Uh, the Zeb is about 2,300 grams. The Fox 38 is about 2,200 grams. Um, obviously I'm rounding within a couple grams, but that's pretty close numbers, steer tube, axle travel, et cetera, will all affect that. But, um, so about 150 grams heavier, the price points vary depending on the spec, but this one's 1149. So it's in the ballpark. Um, you know, I think you're kind of getting a little bit of a premium boutique brand sort of a vibe with the DVO stuff. So. You know, I don't say it's out of line, uh, especially when I bring the performance into it. But if you're talking, you know, someone who's just a weight weenie and counting grams to dollars to competitors, they might write it off. But I think for riders that are looking for traction, comfort, compliance, per suspension performance, you know, and weight's just an also, but not the only factor to consider. The DVO is, I think, right in the ballpark there um, and really a worthwhile option to consider. So let's see here, downsides. It took a little while for me to set up. Obviously we ride RockShox and Fox forks a lot. Uh, so I, I know my settings for the most part. They can change a little bit based on 
each bike's rear suspension platform, uh, the geo of the bike, etc. But I'm pretty dialed on each of those. This I was kind of starting from scratch and trying to get it to feel like the Fox or the Rock Shocks, um, and it wasn't either of those forks, so it wasn't going to feel exactly like them. But earlier, I did say it blended the two favorite parts of each of those forks, and what does that mean? When we did that Fox 38 versus Zeb video, I picked the Fox 38 as my favorite 38 mil fork at the time. I, I uh, well, up until this, I still stand behind that. I still like the 38 better than the Zeb in most conditions. There are some places the Zeb is superior, but for gen as a general, if I had to pick the 38 over the Zeb would still be my selection. I like that suppleness and sensitivity off the top. I feel like the Rock Shocks just takes a little bit more to get that thing to move and open that little, I don't know, stick shin or whatever you want to call it, the sensitivity. So the Fox to me is a little bit better, especially in dry desert terrains where I spend a lot of time riding on loose rocks. It just allows that tire to kind of float, or I should say like hover and stick on the ground better than being kind of deflected and floating off to the side. Um, the downside with the Fox fork is that it can be harder to manage the mid stroke and end stroke of the travel. And that's where the RockShox comes in really well because I think the RockShox mid travel range to end of stroke are really, really awesome. And they instill and inspire confidence and make you want to hard charge, jump stuff deep. Cause you're like, I am never going to blow through this travel. It's going to give me like this nice, just ramp up of a pillow. And that's what I really like about the Zeb. This fork does both of those things together. It gives me almost a Fox-like suppleness and sensitivity, but it gives me the RockShox mid support and the Zeb kind of ramp and progression. And I think it's worth noting at 180 pounds, um, I'm not running any volume reducers in this fork. Um, and that was a weird thing for me, kind of going back to the setup side of things like, you know, I'm used to running volume reducers and a couple of them in most uh, of the forks. and to not run any volume reducers was like a little bit weird. So it just took some time to put them in, take them out, adjust air pressure, uh, low speed, high speed compressions. Like there's a lot of clicks. That's another thing. I think there's like 26 clicks of compression. Um, I think low speed's only five or six. So that's more noticeable changes, but it took a while to set up. But once I got it set up, it just felt like the perfect mesh of, of Fox 38 suppleness and sensitivity with the Zeb's mid stroke support and ramp up. So, uh, and again, uh, I think another hidden attribute that a lot of people might not talk about or, or pick up on is that, that vibration damping nature, that extra material, I think, while it is a weight detraction, really does a good job at minimizing chatter um, and, and just making it a little bit of a smoother, more comfortable fork. So it's only been six months, right? Uh, and we've done a lot of riding, a lot of shuttle riding in some very, very dry conditions. I've had no leaking. I've had no noise, no issues or negatives to complain about. But obviously, we're not a year into this review. I haven't spent a season at the bike park, um, anything like that. But so far, the durability, reliability seems to be there. The fork is performing just as well as it did on day one. So for, for now, all I can say is that the Onyx D1 SL is an absolutely awesome 38 mil fork. One that I hope to see on more test bikes, to be honest. I'd love to see these uh, and get one on an e-bike. But um, yeah, a killer enduro fork, bike park fork, whatever. If, if you are looking for an alternative, I think this is a fork you should probably check out. I've been super pleased. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, let us know if you have any comments, questions, or other forks you'd like to see us review. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys out on the trails.